Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim with Morial TV and Morial Radio, here live with James Jacob Prash in Galilee, in Israel. Jacob, one of the believers had the question, based on Acts 8.26, does God use angels in the work of evangelism? In Acts 8.26 specifically, an angel was not used to proclaim the gospel to a non-believer. An angel was use, used to bring a message to an evangelist to go and bring the gospel to a non-believer. Angels are used by God or dispatched by God for many reasons to assist or to deliver instruction to believers in many situations, including evangelism, yes. But the idea that angels preach the gospel directly is more a phenomenon that takes place after the rapture in the book of Revelation, where the eternal gospel is being preached from the sky by angelic agency and so forth. Now, we do see in the nativity narrative, the angels singing, um, Glory in a Chelsea's Deo, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men of goodwill, to bring good news. The word there is gospel. Evangelion in Greek, Besor in Hebrew. That would be an exception where the good news was brought to the shepherds by angels that Christ had been born. But that was not specifically evangelism as we would understand it based on the death and resurrection of Jesus and the atonement. So angels can be involved in any work or ministry of God, but angels are generally not used as substitutes for human evangelists at the present time in the age of the church. Thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Morial catalog on the Morial website, morial.org. But... In this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book, 
And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo. What the scripture actually teaches about the rapture. The snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.